Hi, I'm Nathan Zampronio, one of your Hawkesbury City Councillors, and I want to talk to you about tonight's meeting of council. Councillor Lyons Bucket brought a notice of motion to call for a report spurred by concerns that land clearing in the Hawkesbury has posed a danger to wildlife habitats, including koalas. These concerns have existed for many years, but came into sharp focus in the aftermath of the terrible fires in late 2019. After the fires, Council were invited to consider opting into something called the Rural Boundary Clearing Code in October 2021, just before the last Council elections. Now, Council decided not to join at that time because it wasn't supported by experts in environmental science or many of our wise heads in the local RFS. Well, not without a lot of work because it would have placed 15,800 hectares of protected bushland and habitat in the Hawkesbury under threat of clear felling from landowners who would have only had to self-assess whether they were allowed to do it. The fear was that developers or heavy-handed landowners could clear fell whatever they wanted under the pretense of fire safety. Worse, Council hasn't even bothered to acquire the geospatial mapping tools readily available to monitor what our tree cover looks like. This code may have a significant impact on the tree cover across uh, our RU zones. I asked Council staff if we possess the geospatial and mapping tools that allow us to quantify the degree of tree cover on a per property basis and then also track changes over time. I was told that we do not. I know that the technology exists. When I was in Canberra recently at the local government conference, I spent a lot of time speaking with several providers like Nearmap who do possess that technology and make it available to LGAs. As I said at the time, what we can't measure, we can't determine the impact of. After the local government elections in late 2021, the Labor and Liberal councillors joined together to ram through the adoption of that code without any further consideration. Fast forward a year and a half, and guess what? All of the things that we were warning about have come to pass. Um, so when we when we chose to opt into this to this code, and it should be noted that we are the only peri-urban council who chose to do so, we were warned by experts that it would be used to clear land for development. And that's exactly what we've seen in the last month. So as you enter Currajong, you're now faced with a significant bald patch, a site subject to a DA and awaiting a complying development certificate for demolition of a dwelling now has a devegetated boundary. And when I checked with the planning staff, they confirmed that it was cleared under the Rural Boundary Clearing Code. That code states that it can be used for the purpose of bushfire hazard mitigation. And yet the bushfire assessment report for this property states that the site is incorrectly identified as bushfire prone, wasn't considered to be within a known fire path, and that bushfire was unlikely to occur, and that existing asset protection zones and emergency services access requirements already exceeded those needed. So no need to clear any vegetation along the boundary for bushfire protection. 100% not for bushfire protection and 100% for ease of development. Now, it should be noted that, that the property owner in this, in this instance has not done anything unlawful. What this case highlights is that the code can be used in a way that is unsatisfactory for the public interest, especially in an area like Currajong, where previously every tree removed required a separate and individual approval. Because of this blanket approach and this ludicrous and unscientific legislation, thousands of hectares of the Hawkesbury are fair game. And we knew that when this council chose to opt into this code. Those of you who supported the introduction of this code pledged to support mapping and protection of koalas. So here's your chance. You were told that this tool would facilitate land clearing and harm biodiversity protections. We were told that it would be used in areas not at risk of bushfire. We were told by the RFS that it wasn't a useful tool for fire protection in the Hawkesbury and would in fact hinder firefighting efforts and you still bent over backwards to have it applied here, and you told the public that it would all be fine with a bit of koala mapping. And yet, we still don't have koala mapping, and we don't have a koala protection plan. 
We still don't know how much tree cover we're losing, but examples are coming up all over the district of developers and heavy-handed landowners getting rid of tree cover and habitat left and right, which was the spur to Council Alliance Bucket's motion. That disappointed me because I believe that it's possible to be both a good conservative and a good conservationist. I'm of the view that looking after koala habitats and preserving what little tree cover we have left is something that we should all get on board with. Just like I believe that developers shouldn't be on council. Tonight's motion was really only about revisiting the question about what we as council can do to finally get around to having a strategy that protects koalas by mapping their their extent in the area, uh, assess whether inappropriate land clearing is taking place, and getting the right tools to map our tree cover, and then seeing if the state government will help. I was really disappointed that some councillors felt that it wasn't even worth their time to listen to other points of view. Um, So... I'll be voting against and I'll move Mr Mayor the motion be put. Moving the motion be put, Councillor Connor. Councillor Zernprobno, are you seconding that? No, um, I was hoping to speak oh. the motion. I'll second it. Councillor Connor is seconding it, okay. Well, while he's deliberating, Mr Mayor, I'd like to express um, a significant grievance that I'll be denied an opportunity to speak on this important matter with some relevant facts and figures that I've taken some time to prepare. Okay, but I think you need to hang on to that. You're out of order at the moment. It's my understanding that it's it's not to be debated. <clears throat> Councillor Connolly has moved that the motion be put. All those in favour of that motion, please raise your hand. In favour are Councillor Connolly, Councillor Sheeter, Councillor Beigel, Councillor Reardon, Councillor Cotlash and Councillor Calvert. In seeking to simply shut down the debate, I wasn't able to remind my colleagues that what was being proposed was perfectly in line with a bunch of other things that councillors already signed up to, like the environmental sustainability strategy that we put on exhibition literally only a month ago, or the urban greening strategy that we were debating only a month before that or the Western Sydney Engineering Design Manual that we approved last November, all of which have policies and clauses designed to preserve and enhance tree cover and provide councils uh, with the tools that help them measure what they need to. Despite the fact that we've heard a lot of rhetoric tonight, nobody has offered any evidence of what was just claimed, that this has led to mass land clearing. or that there's been huge problems as a result of this or attacks on our biodiversity. If people suspect that there's been a- illegal land clearing of any sort under any code, they should actually report that to council. It's a little rich for councillors to tell people to report illegal land clearing or rely on the evidence when they've voted against council even having the ability to even gather that evidence in the first place. The bulk of that motion that Council Lyons Bucket advanced was defeated. You should be disappointed in the councillors who shut down the debate and who voted yet again to give developers a free kick. Thanks for watching.